Привет всем! Welcome to this video. We are going to be doing a painting video on the Burger Panzer 2A2. Hi guys, welcome to this video. This is part two. I did a review on this kit, Tafcom's Burger Panzer 2A2. Uh, there are two versions of this kit. Anyways, I was originally going to do a full construction video on it. And then I just thought, well, nah, there's no real point in that. Let's just make a painting video. Uh, let me just sum up the construction anyways. I'll just say straight out the box. It is an excellent kit. It is massively detailed. It's a lot of fun to build. And once it's all put together, it looks very impressive, actually. Uh, Points to note are really very small things that I've done um, in terms of the build, which was the main one really was replacing the tracks. I'll just tell you about that. What we've got here are main tracks for the Leopard one. I'll just show you this set here if you can get a hold of them. These are clipped together tracks, no cement used, but I, didn't use, I did have to use cement in a few places. Why have I got these? I've got these because the supplied ones are just a little bit tricky for myself. Here are the supplied ones, and the actual track links themselves are pretty great. It's the end connectors that I made in this uh, flexible vinyl type material. In one case, I used them for a few spares that are actually attached to the hull. And I saw that on contact with cement, these actually tend to disintegrate. And also, I'm just concerned that they just aren't going to stay together because there's nothing really to hold them together positively. So that was why I used these main tracks. As I said, there's no glue, whatever, except I had to use it in a few places because they're all compression fit. The styrene used on these is of that higher pressure styrene injection. So that makes them quite vulnerable to certain painting products. We'll talk about that next in the painting process. So anyways, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward build out the box. It takes quite a lot of time to throw everything together but it does look really good at the end. Uh, the other sort of small mod I've made is these are uh, the mud guards here. You do get them inside the kit as foot wedge parts. The thing that I find with foot wedge parts is that they just tend to ping off all the time. So all I did was trace around them on some styrene card and glue them in place, sort of depict them as if they're wrapped up in position and I've got a few parts loose, including this, which is actually a frame for a leopard power pack. And that is the only thing that is missing from this kit. It would be awesome. This part here to note is actually the lifting frame that would go on top of a power pack. Uh, I've got the MG3 machine gun separate to paint separately. I've applied masking on all the optics. Still need just to mask off the actual, the vehicle lights, and we're ready to go into paint. So uh, let me explain the painting philosophy. Okay, painting philosophy. The vehicle itself is complex in that there's so many different fittings and there's lots of little nooks and crannies that would be in shade on the actual vehicle. And therefore we're gonna use one of my favorite primers, we're gonna use the Mr. Hobby Finishing Surfacer Black uh, to totally shade this in everywhere. I'll do the tracks, I'll do all the ancillary components totally in black. And then for once, I'm gonna try and experiment with this so-called black and white technique, if that's what it's called. I'm not gonna use white though, I'm gonna use deck tan. I'm gonna add shades. And what we're going to try and do is do some mottling type paint finish. I'm going to try and vary up the tone. Now, in terms of the scheme as well, I'm going to use like a hybrid scheme. There's 
These schemes here is a pretty typical Bundeswehr NATO scheme, uh, tritonal camo. Um, done this with quite a few vehicles. And then there's one with a white camo on top of the winter camouflage. Yeah. So my idea is to paint it the overall olive grun color and try and vary this using a model type technique which I'm just going to montage together and then I'll explain afterwards. Ask any questions you want, guys, and I'll try and fill you in if you need to know the details, which will be pretty self-explanatory from the video clip. And then on top of that, we're going to apply the white camo on top of a hairspray and give this a deteriorated look. That is my
do it for. Bet on whether Lewis Hamilton is getting pussy tonight or not. He's a cute virgin to shit. Except like you know, jail. 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 Basically, the painting stuff is done now. Now, um, let's just go over some detail points, really, just out of interest, really, okay? Now, what I did here, I did a lot of um, detailed paint work on the Pioneer tools. Now, I found references of basically these tools would be overpainted, or they also sometimes were not. So, I've used the versions where they were not. On the basis, maybe the technical sergeant has said that, you know, we're due for uh, inspection pretty soon. I want all your tools immaculate. Take them off the vehicle before we give it the spray job. You know, that sort of story. Anyways, it just looks more interesting and uh, certainly highlights those details on the, uh, on the hull of the vehicle. It looks very impressive. Uh, now, it was quite a lot of hairspray uh, applied overall, but the the scratches have been kept really, really small. Smaller than I can probably get with a brush, um, which was the idea. And I haven't taken it down too far. It's basically as if it was a really quite a good whitewash that they applied on top and it's just very localized where around certain areas. So trying to keep everything on that sort of theme. Now these Bundesvair vehicles, looking at references, they just seem to be in immaculate condition. Looks like the German army really knows how to look after their stuff and they spend a lot of time on maintenance of the vehicles. You know, they don't look, um, they don't look like crap, like a lot of our vehicles did in the, in, in the British army, um, believe me. But anyways, we have used a bit of imagination here. Uh, the heavier wear effects applied to this support cradle for the engine power packs, yeah? Um, again, this isn't from references. This is just something to give it a bit more interest. So as if maybe, you know, ah, geez, we couldn't get the proper lifting frame. We had to get an old one, you know, it's a bit worn out. It just looks a little bit different. And also, of course, I've painted it a different green over at the camo. Camel's been kept that tight edge version. And I think we're ready to go with the weathering next, which is the next steps, obviously. Now, the idea in this, basically in this demonstration, was to show you like a model technique. And you can see after I applied the flat coat, you can see that the models come back in. You can see these different patch areas and 
So don't confuse it with this crazy term color modulation, whatever. It's just a different way of painting the vehicle. I haven't used any like hard demarcations or I've tried to avoid it. And I haven't done the um, typical light on top, dark below. I've mixed it up a bit. And the idea is here to just depict some light wear on the paint of the vehicle. So where the anti-slip surfaces maybe have been slightly eroded, they've gone a bit darker, maybe around the hatches, maybe the paint's a little bit more exposed and it's been worn off. It's just imagination, really. Um, I wanted to experiment with this. By no means am I telling you this is the way. In fact, if you have a look at my previous videos, you can see I like to mix and match techniques for the sort of vehicles that I'm doing and just show different ways of doing things. I don't even try and pretend to be the oracle on uh, armor weathering or aircraft weathering by any means. It's just a just demonstration. It's just a lot of fun, still experimenting. Um, there's a lot of guys that get into a pattern and they do the same thing on every single vehicle. And I have to admit, I did that for quite a long time, but now I've, I've gone back to sort of experimenting and you know, having a bit more fun. And this isn't that really what the hobby's about. Anyways, weathering, okay? Because I've got the model and you can see it um, and it's subtle, the weathering's been kept quite light. The idea here is um, I'm gonna apply a filter on top and we'll go with the tone. Now, because we've got green and an off-white, you could go for a brown on top, but I'm gonna go for gray. I'm gonna actually go for gray on top filter um, the technique, whatever it is, it's just painting. It's just painting with diluted paint. It's gonna make up a mixture from oil paint and you'll see in the montage that we'll do in the next bit that it's just gonna be applied overall. So it's not gonna be a detailed wash. We'll do the detailed wash afterwards. And then I need to assess what it looks like. Am I happy with it? Do I wanna go back in? Do I wanna do any more? The idea here is that we're just gonna keep things kind of light for once, you know? Uh, not every vehicle needs to be crusted with mud. Not every vehicle needs to be totally rusted to pieces. And I mean, from what I've seen with the Bundesvair vehicles, they do look, you know, really in good condition. So maybe that's the story that I'm telling with this uh, with this uh, Burger Panzer here. Um, I did start the weathering underneath here. I just did a very, very light spray, as you saw from the montage of some earth color. I'm gonna keep that as it is. I've seen a few vehicles that haven't got the masses of grime built up under there. So apply a light wash. Uh, we need to do the tracks. I wanna get this thing together now. That's really the main objective. So I've still got the road wheels off at the moment and I'll keep them off because I'll apply, it'll be easier just to apply the wash when they're in this position rather than attach the vehicle, that's the only reason. Need to do the tracks. Uh, the tracks is gonna be just the way that I've found that I like doing tracks now. And because as I mentioned previously, um, this is high pressure injection plastic and it does have a tendency to disintegrate if it's exposed to these to the uh, mineral solvents like white spirits and those sort of thinners, uh, they can have a very detrimental effect because a lot of this is just push fit. It gets in between the gaps and the stuff and these basically tend to disintegrate. Using acrylic washes, I can avoid that. So with the tracks, I'm gonna repeat the process using acrylic washes. Um, quick reference picture here for the tracks. Uh, points to note, yes, they do look rusty. Now, um, don't get too confused about this. Rust doesn't mean it's in a state of disrepair. In fact, the actual, the natural coating of rust that appears on the metal parts of the track, which is like an alloy, is actually a semi-protective coating. Um, they don't rust beyond that. So it's not a depiction of them being in a bad state. It's just their natural state. They're exposed to water and oxygen. So that's the way they appear as in these reference pictures. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, the road wheels, on the other hand, these appear absolutely immaculate and they have a very different type of weathering. You'll see that the actual bolts they tend to be um, actually bright silver patches. Now, if I apply silver paint, it tends to be a bit overpowering on a scale model. So I'm gonna try and replicate that maybe with a pencil or something. 
And the other point to note with these tracks is um, the drive sprockets, I've never seen a drive sprocket that becomes bright silver. Uh, metal against metal, it just, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't get polished. But these guide ones in here do, as you can see from the picture again, this gets, um, it actually gets rubbed up against the rubber portions in the inside of the road wheel. And that really, that just takes off the paint and polishes up the metal quite quite bright action appearance but again scale effect if I if I do it bright it's it's a lot of work to bring it down so I'm gonna try again with either a gray paint or a silver pencil I'll experiment see how it goes let's crack on get through the next stage and then I'm not too sure what's gonna happen I never really do when I'm doing this process I, I've got an idea of what I want but as I go through it, then I get more of an idea of what I want to do. And I've got some ideas, but let's crack on and, and get.
Panzer, if you wanted to see a full build, please tell me. I just don't think people were interested. So this is just totally painting video. Anyways, what do you guys think? I think the montage was pretty self-explanatory. Um, what, what, what? How did my plans change? I think the main change in plans was by actually dry brushing the model using some enamels from Umbral. Um, not in that stereotypical, harsh, strong dry brushing where everything pops out too much i just want to keep it real subtle and it seemed to work on this vehicle um the chipping obviously has only been restrained to that lifting frame to that support frame for the power pack the actual vehicle no chipping at all does it need it of course not no do we see it on we could do some micro chipping but Really, does every single model need to be chipped and battered and rusty? Or how about, let's try and make one look how a Bundeswehr vehicle seems to appear in references. So if I showed this to a Bundeswehr tanker, would he sort of say, yeah, that's how our vehicles tend to look. That's the sort of thing that I'm trying to go for in this example. Of course, if you disagree. Um, feel free. I mean, there's nothing wrong in making them muddy or more dirty, but this is just a change, isn't it? It's just a difference to sort of show a vehicle like this. The vehicle itself is just so interesting in my own eyes anyway. Just the actual look of it certainly is going to look very different on the shelf. And I've really, really enjoyed this project. So guys, um, also I need to say a thank you to my Patreons. If you're interested in more of what I'm doing, join the Patreon community. It is dirt cheap, but I've got a video there every week and it's a vlog. It's telling you how everything's going, how it's progressing. I don't get a video up on YouTube every single week, but I have got one on the Patreon where you can ask me questions, where I can demonstrate things to you 
and of course it's just a lot of fun as well so uh, that tails off uh, this one and we'll be back soon with the new build till then take it easy